Hi there. Is it okay, great. So hi there, my name's Paul, um, uh, and I'm here just to, for 10 minutes, so I'll, I'll try my best to introduce this open source satellite program to you in 10 minutes. So uh, I'm a software engineer, I'm a senior software engineer, so I'm your second largest group of, uh, you know, mem I mean, within that sort of group, uh, but uh, I've been in the software industry for about 20 years, um, working on embedded systems mostly, um, and uh, in, within that time, I've worked uh, mostly within the space industry, working on embedded systems on board spacecraft. And I currently work for a company called KISP Space Systems, based in Farnborough. And uh, we are a sort of engineering space consultancy for different uh, blue chip companies uh, around the globe. Um, but our kind of heart and soul and, and why we exist is uh, this open source satellite program. So what is it and, uh, you know, how has it come about? Um, so uh, over the years, uh, there's been a sort of there's been the traditional sort of space industry um, that uh, produces spacecraft satellites that are quite expensive, quite big. And the reason they're quite big and quite expensive is because they use tried and tested technologies um, that uh, they know are going to work, but they tend to be about 20 years out of date in terms of you know the modern technology. Uh, and so in order to get something that's performant and make you know good things happen in space, you've got to make something quite big and therefore quite expensive and very expensive to launch. And actually the UK has been um, quite sort of formative in disrupting this industry over, over the years. Um, within the last 30 years, the University of Surrey in particular has been quite um, prominent in trying to disrupt the, the industry by creating small satellites and uh, leveraging some of the commercial off the shelf sort of technologies that you have in your laptop computer, in your mobile phone, in your car. Um, and, they, and actually at the beginning of that journey, they, they weren't taken very seriously. Um, the, uh, the, the space industry thought that actually these, these kind of technologies wouldn't survive the space environment. They wouldn't be able to uh, survive the radiation environment and the thermal sort of problems that you have in that in space but actually as it happens um, particularly in low earth orbit so that's sort of 640 kilometers up there thereabouts um, actually these technologies work rather well then within the last sort of five to ten years there's been another um, innovation uh, again come out of the UK mostly Scotland actually uh, that are, where there's this these CubeSats have been created these are so small sats are, are, are kind of that big that sort of size and CubeSats are sort of that big, really, really tiny little things. Uh, and you can launch them on a rocket that's already taking something else up. They can sort of go into the fairing and just kind of pop off. And it's quite sort of, uh, it's quite cheap to produce these things. So um, there's been a, you know, a, a big trend uh, down to CubeSats. Now that, that's all great. Um, and they're, they're a lot cheaper, but there is a, there's kind of a gap here um, because CubeSats, whilst cheap and good, there's a limit to what you can do with them. You can't break the laws of physics. So something that's very, very small, it's difficult to get it to kind of move around in space. It's difficult to get it to point at, uh, you know, change its attitude whilst it's up there. And so there's kind of limitations of what you can do. Uh, and so we thought, wouldn't it be great as a group of sort of space professionals if we could sort of take this kind of small satellite model uh, uh, and try to bring these things together. Uh, and so we've kind of recognized that there's this market need to try and create something which is uh, the size of a small satellite, but with a, a price point that's down at the CubeSat level. And, and that's what we hope to be the next generation of microsatellite. So how are we going to achieve that? And this is why I'm here, because we're hoping to um, utilize the open source community. And certainly within the software industry for many years, we've been into the idea of open source uh, and more, uh, you know, more lately into in, our, in sort of hardware industries as well. So our vision is to make space more accessible to more people. And our mission is to stimulate uh, the exploitation of space and create new applications and services and to pr promote the responsible and sustainable use of space because there is a, you know, a tendency to make spacecraft smaller and smaller. The problem being, one of the problems is that as you launch something very small, it's undetectable. 
um, and uh, it can lead to basically space junk. And uh, if you follow the space industry at all, you'll, you'll know that there's a lot of junk up there. And uh, nowadays you get collisions of, uh, of spacecraft in low Earth orbit. So we don't want to do that. We see that as irresponsible. Let's create something that's slightly bigger. And our pledge is to essentially um, create this, this thing open source in the truest sense. So we not only utilize open source technologies, but we'll also create an open source community um, and actively encourage people to contribute to the development of this spacecraft. Uh, and we'll pledge that after a year from launching this first satellite, uh, we will issue the designs of uh, everything from the software to the bill of materials, to the uh, mechanical design, the schematics, the electronic schematics, the electronics layout, everything, any design artifact that you can think that you might need to build a satellite, that's what we're going to, to issue freely and openly. And we're also um, attempting to uh, create a community because there's not many people doing this kind of thing in the space industry. Um, so we're looking for supporters and sponsors to help us either financially or to uh, contribute to the work of, of the program. And as I say, whether you're in the space industry or not, we have got some private investment, which has kicked us off so far. We're about um, an eighth of the, of the, of the money that we, we need to launch a satellite. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. So, yeah, I think that's that's me, really. That's in, in a nutshell. That's. That's what I'm here to talk about. Um, we have, yeah, I've got some contact details there. If you uh, are interested further in maybe getting involved or hearing more, I've also got some flyers and business cards and various bits. So if you want uh, to find out a little bit more, then I've got plenty of information I can I can hand out as well. Has anybody got any questions? Yeah, so uh, in the traditional sport, sort of space industry, there is there are um, standards that you you, you want to, uh, to follow. Um, what we're trying to do is to try and um, do something, you know, in terms of process, try to come up with something which is is our, our kind of best of breed, if you like. You know, we've, we've got experience not only in the space industry, but the aerospace industry and various other industries as well. So we're looking at trying to pick out the bits that are the most value added from our perspective and then implement, you know, a process which um, gains the most value, I suppose. Yeah, so what, we, what we're actually uh, going to do, um, we're, we're looking at the latest sort of set of processes, um, mostly from the automotive industry, actually, because they're performant enough to do what we need and they're low power enough for a, a spacecraft. So they're arm based technologies, arm processors. We're also looking at RISC-V and various other bits. And we, we will take a commercial processor and then radiation test it. So we're looking at trying to get some central funding from the government to try and go off and, and actually fire protons at it and see how it survives. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're doing. Plus, you know, commercial technologies are resilient to a certain extent, um, but you can.